18th of April is actually a very important day in the church calendar. Today is the 500th anniversary of Martin Luther standing before what is known as Diet of Worms. Some people pronounce Diet of Worms. That sounds strange, right? A Diet of Worms. <laughs> it's a German word, Diet, which refers to a high-powered council of civil leaders. In those days, the emperor and the princes of Europe. And uh, Worms is a city uh, in Germany, south of Frankfurt today. And uh, Martin Luther was in a place called Wittenberg. Uh, and he had to travel 300 miles to get to Worms. And that's because, as we know, it is in 1517. In 2017, we celebrated the 500th anniversary of Protestant Reformation. Because in 1517, Martin Luther nailed the 95 Theses against the Roman Catholic Church doctrines and practices. And he pasted it on the door of the castle church in Wittenberg. And that started what is known as Protestant Reformation. And the gospel truths, justification by faith, was preached. Christ alone, by grace alone, by faith alone, for the glory of God alone was the theme. Now, 1518, 1519 were very crucial years because the Roman Catholic Church, the Pope, and the Cardinals acted against Martin Luther's 95 Theses. And the Pope come up with what is known as a papal bull. Bulla is a word that's for edict, order, or a command from the Pope. And that demanded Martin Luther to repent within a certain time. He was given time until 1521, 1521, January. And he did not recant. Instead, he burned the papal bull and saying that's all against the scriptures. And of course, Pope got very angry, excommunicated Martin Luther from the church and commanded that he be stopped from teaching. And that would simply mean torture and death for Martin Luther. That's what happened in the past. For example, John Huss, who lived uh, some time before Martin Luther, was burned to death when he didn't recant his, his complaints against the Catholic Church. And so what we know then was Martin Lu Luther's death was drawing nigh. However, he had a friend who was a powerful man, a prince, Frederick, and he got involved and he sort of saved Martin Luther's sure murder. And he told Prince, or rather Emperor Charles, uh, who relied a lot on Frederick to be an emperor, and agreed to stop any action against Martin Luther, but required him to appear before the Diet, or Diet, as we sometimes read. And so he appeared before the Diet, which was actually assembly of all the princes and high-powered religious leaders. And he appeared there on the 17th of April, 1521. And they asked him two major questions. Did you write all these books? There was about 25 of them. He said, yes, these are mine. All right, would you recant according to what the Pope has said? He said, I need some time to think. Next day, he was given an opportunity. So that's April 18th. Today is April 18th. It's a 500th anniversary. So I wrote an article uh, remembering these days, and there's a picture painting of what happened that day. You can see Emperor Charles on the left side 
with a scepter in his hand, sitting with a crown on his head. And the rest are prominent figures, both princes and kings and religious leaders. Martin Luther is standing there in the white gown, looking toward Charles and saying some things. Now, his famous words in Diet of Worms was at the end of his statement, unless I'm convinced by the testimony of Scripture or by clear reason, for I trust neither Pope nor Council alone, since it is well known that they have often erred and contradicted themselves. I'm bound by the Scriptures I have cited. For my conscience is captive to the word of God. I cannot and will not recant anything, since to act against one's conscience is neither safe nor right. I cannot do otherwise. Here I stand. May God help me. Those are the words of Martin Luther. So the famous line, here I stand. I cannot do otherwise. Well, this was not a self-affirming, self-confident word. This was a humble servant of God saying, I cannot do anything but what God's word teaches me, and I stand on the word of God. So those are the famous words of Martin Luther. 500 years ago, a day like this, when he stood before mighty men. In fact, everybody expected him to be dead within a year, but his friend... Frederick arranged for him to be safely kept away. Frederick III, who was also known as the Weiss of Saxony, requested that the council will give him a safe passage back to his town. Now Charles said, well, I give him safe passage, but there is no guarantee you'll be safe after that passage. In other words, the king will give an edict that will protect him from anyone attacking him, and he will be safe in his journey back to his own house, Wittenberg. But after he reaches there, anyone can kill him for his stand. So what Frederick did was he arranged his soldiers to secretly snatch Martin Luther on his way back home. So they took him as a prisoner, and not to hurt him, but to hide him. And they took him to Frederick's castle and put him there for one year. During that time, Martin Luther translated the Bible into German language, which was a big work he did while he was hiding uh, under the supervision of Frederick. And uh, the Reformation came after Martin Luther translated into German and that was a fantastic work which helped German language to spread. People started to read the Bible. People started to understand the language. People knew how it to be written and read and so on. And soon, Reformation and Renaissance all came one after another in Europe. So that's a great story of a mighty man who was so convinced of God's truth, the gospel in Christ and stood for it. And when we think about all these things, we realize, you know, great men are really the outworking of God's gracious providence. They are people with unusual talents and all that, but they had so many enemies that they could, their life could have been snubbed any time. But it's the grace of God that protected him. Even Frederick III intervening and sa saving him from a sure death and uh, sort of locking him up for safety purpose in his castle. Most people in Germany thought somebody killed him because they couldn't see him for one year. But God was using that to protect him, to give him an opportunity to translate the scriptures into German language. And so all this happened 500 years ago. And today we sit with the gospel in our hearts. Praise God for a great man like that. 